All right, so welcome. Uh, due to the COVID-19 issue, we're going online. Uh, this week, we're gonna do uh, the art of production design. So, uh, let me go into some hand sanitizer. And let's get into it. All right, so uh, production design, the department is led by the production designer. All right, they're the person responsible for the entire art department on a production. Uh, normally the second person uh, hired on to a production uh, after the director because it's the production designer who has to make sure the director's vision comes to fruition, comes to life. Uh, so they work from the artist concept, you know, we saw that in the Star Wars clip, um, all the way through shoot and even to the wrap. And along with the DP or the director of photography, we'll do some photography next. Uh, they're in charge, like I said, of, of executing the director's vision uh, of whatever the script is, whatever the story is. Uh, they're in charge of getting that vision that the director has up on the screen for us to pay our $10 and go see the movie. Well, right, not right now. When we here is a close down. All right, a little bit of history. Uh, the production designer, the Academy Award for Best uh, Production Design recognizes achievement in film art direction. That's what it called when you get that Oscar. Uh, it's called Achievement in Film Art Direction. Uh, Tile Production Designer, it's pretty modern. Uh, it used to be Art Director or Art Direction. They changed to Production Designer, Production Design, Production Designer in 2012 at the 85th Oscars, which, wow, that doesn't seem that long ago, but to some of you that probably seems a long time ago. Pre-1947, uh, the award uh, was given, the Oscar was given for Best Interior Decoration. And post-1947, they gave it to Best Art Director and they shared it with the set decorator. All right, a little bit of history. We've got a motion picture arts and sciences there at the bottom. All right, so let's talk about necessary skill sets. Uh, here we go, to be a good production designer, uh, communicator, right? You have to be able to communicate in whatever best way you know how to communicate. Um, you should have an art or some sort of design background. Uh, people skills, obviously, because you have this huge staff of people, all the little departments we looked at uh, work underneath you. Uh, flexibility, because stuff happens, right? No, not much you can do about it when stuff happens. Um, a true multitasker, not just someone who can drive and text at the same time. Uh, you have to be able to deal with all the different departments that you are in charge of. Uh, here's another one. College degree is optional. Uh, you know, you can't go to a film school and say, I want to major in production design. Uh, you can major in design. You can major in theater production. There's a lot of other art-centric uh, majors you can major in, but there is no... Uh, there's no major for production design. There might be some schools, some obscure schools that I've never heard of that have a production design specialty because you know you can specialize in cinematography and producing and screenwriting. Um, but again, college degree is optional. Uh, you should have a broad and well-rounded education. Uh, <laughs> uh, some in, involved in the humanities in some way, uh, some artistic, some technical uh, know-how. Uh, and uh, like uh, most production jobs that we found, uh, it's what you know, right? But it's also who you know, right? You get your next job based on your last job. It's a difficult career. It uh, takes a lot of stamina. I have the patience to do thorough research. Ability to change takes a lot of out of you in terms of schedule. You have to enjoy very long hours. Because of the nature of the work, being on the road a lot. Ability to work well with a lot of people. Be totally collaborative. You need to be able to be creative and you need to be able to be organized. You have to be creative, but you have to be great with money. Not fearful of making choices. To listen before you jump to a conclusion and just barge right ahead and uh, do something. Understand the project as a whole, but not to try to think about it all at once because the amount of things that you're responsible for on a film are, uh, can be quite overwhelming if you try to um, indulge all of it at one time. Disaster strikes daily, kind of, you know, and you kind of, well, as you get more and more mature and more experienced, you can figure out how to work yourself around that. It's very important to understand what the camera sees. And I think that means you really have to have a good understanding of camera and lens work. And it's very important to understand 
that the camera is not the same as your eye, and you have to simplify things in a way that you can interpret them. I always felt that I had to uh, pick my path and go towards it, and that's not at all how it happened. My path evolved as I did, um, and I never could have guessed uh, that I would be a production designer. So, <laughs> just like everything says, uh, people mentioned, you know, the, some sort of background in art, uh, humanities, being able to work well with people, being able to be flexible, uh, being able to be good with money. It, it's, it's the jack of all trades uh, job because you're in charge of everything it takes to get up onto the screen. And when you think about everything it takes to get up on the screen, it, it can be daunting, like you said. You take it one task at a time. The most important thing is to get sort of as broad an education as you can. Get a really well-rounded education early so that you know a lot about a lot of things. I actually like the idea for a production designer that they have a university education and that they've studied you know, art, architecture, uh, but also literature and... The history of art, the history of design, the history of interior design, the history of architecture, the history of sculpture. I mean, you should know Carl Jung, you should know Joseph Campbell, you should know architectural history, you should know contemporary architecture, you should know furniture design. Theater and drama in English. How to draw, how to read, how to read a picture. Just you should know, you should, you know, it, it's never ending. Each show is like this incredible research project where we're trying to become experts as fast as we can. These things require just a real intimate knowledge of all sorts of things. You know? Go have adventures, go travel the world, go be curious about everything about art and architecture and cultural anthropology and don't lose the curiosity. Travel, look at the choices people make in their lives. Keep honing your skills, but keep experiencing life and the world and somewhere along the way you'll discover if uh, you want to be a production designer or not because I think you wind up there because ultimately it's the place you're supposed to go. Uh, great, great advice there um, from all those uh, production designers, assistant designers, set decorators um, who've gone through the process and become discovered that they wanted to be production designers. But you, you heard them, right? Broad and well-rounded Education. That doesn't necessarily mean a college education. It means a life education as well. Uh, you know, travel. He said, pay attention to uh, how what people's life choices are. All that stuff is going to going to coagulate into your brain, and 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 then uh, and but knowing how to learn, knowing how to research, uh, figuring out. Okay, uh, last week I was on a science fiction film, and I had to design these sets uh, for you know mecha that didn't exist yet. And next year, I may be on a Victorian 18th, you know, a Victorian England uh, set uh, designing uh, cars that, uh, or not cars yet, but designing things that uh, I had nothing to do, nothing, uh, didn't know anything about, but I had to research um, and figure out and learn about it. So learning how to learn, well, that's kind of what you're learning in college is learning how to learn or learning how to, how to study. Um, but broad and well-rounded education. Not necessarily a college education, a life education, but in college is a great place to, uh, you know, if you can afford to take the classes, well, to, uh, to, to get that broad and well-rounded education. So uh, what is good production design? Uh, production design should serve the story, first and foremost, right? Um, if it's not on the screen, uh, if it's on the screen and it's not driving the, forward, the story forward somehow, it doesn't belong on the screen. It's not serving the story. Uh, it needs to serve the characters as well. If the production design doesn't, the, the costumes that the characters are wearing doesn't fit the production design, um, then something went wrong there. Some lack of communication happened. So it's got to serve the characters of the story, not necessarily the actors. You know, production designers can put actors through hell, but it should serve the characters in the story, which are driving the story forward. Uh, produ good production design doesn't draw attention to itself by waving, you know, big old flags saying, hey, look at me, I'm in a movie, I did this really cool effect, aren't I bitching? You know, it, it shouldn't do that, it shouldn't draw attention to itself. Uh, because there's an old adage, if the audience is noticing you know, the costume design or noticing the, uh, the, the uh, production design or noticing the sets, and then they're not really paying attention to the characters and the story. So you don't want to pull away from uh, the, the audience. You want to add to the experience for the audience. There's another clip. When you see a movie and it's really, really well designed, you, uh, 
you can't imagine that film taking place anywhere else. Good production design, for me, has to uh, move you and transport you to a place that you become immersed in. When you're so engrossed in a movie, on every level, the story, the characters, the visual of it, that you're not paying attention to the technique of it. I hope that I'm not looking at it as a decorator. I'm hoping that it's much more uh, subliminal and that I'm affected much like an audience is. I don't want to be distracted by the environments. I want to just be invited to disappear inside of it. The best production design, you don't notice. The look of a film and how it fits the whole movie is very important. It can't just be standing out on its own. I don't usually go for very operatic sets that don't seem to fit the scope of the film. What I find most notable is when it just is a quiet backdrop for the actors and that the whole project is incredibly cohesive. I'm not interested in, in design that beats you over the head. I'm not interested in a film that cries out, look, you know, I was designed. I'm not kind of interested in that flamboyant, you know, theatrical design on the whole. So I look for something that works with the script, tells you something about the characters, gives you insight into them without bludgeoning you. I'm not necessarily drawn to the ones that are sort of bonk you on the head and say, look at me, I'm really special. Well, for me, I like um, to see a world that that is new and fresh and um, been created, uh, especially for the movie. Like any other art medium, it's very subjective and personal. And um, I think for me, there's always a moment when it crystallizes and I'm watching something and I think this is, you know, really, really incredibly done. And many times it's, it's often not because a production is, is sumptuous or, uh, you know, rich in in period detail, but rather that everything just feels right. What the set decorator does is there just to be there for the, for the story, to support the actors, to support the storyline, to support the characters in whatever way it needs to, but never overpower them. If it moves you, um, if you believe it, if it was serving the story and the character, then, um, then you get me. I always want to see what design supports the story the best. It's all tell, helping to tell the story and helping to tell the, the history of the characters that you're watching on the screen. You've seen this amazing movie and afterwards, when you pick it apart, if you feel like this movie couldn't have been told better any other way, that's good production design. These clips um, there were, were made by the American Motion, American Motion Picture Association um, back in 2012 uh, when they changed the Oscar to say um, uh, production design instead of uh, set design or interior design. <clears throat> and so they got all these, they gathered all these production designers, set decorators, uh, and interviewed them about, you know, what is good production design and this gold mine for, you know, at least for this class, uh, because these people are telling us exactly what they do um, in, in a big cloud sense um, and ha exactly how to do it and what not to do and what to look for. Uh, really good little clips. All right, so that's uh, what is good production design. There you go. I actually have a, a Bachelor of Science in Biology and came to set decoration in a very circuitous route. Uh, after college, I went into research. I always thought I was going to be in the medical field. I worked in hospitals and ambulances and all kinds of things all through college. And when I went into research, I absolutely abhorred it. I, being low woman on the totem pole, I had to do uh, a lot of the, um, shall we say, mutilation of animals in order to harvest the materials that we needed. And I, after a couple of years, I just couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't sacrifice one species for the good of, of the human species. I was not cut out for it. So in despair, I called my brother who had uh, just graduated from film school at NYU. And I said, what am I going to do with my life? He said, well, try film. You've always written. You're a good editor. Um, why don't you try that? And I said, OK, great, sure. What can I do? How do I do that? And he said, call some people. I was living in Cincinnati at the time. And I did. I called some people. And someone eventually said, we need an editing intern. And I said, great. 
I packed the car, moved to New York over the weekend, found an apartment with a friend of mine, and started from there. And uh, eventually fell into um, an art department job when someone called me and said, would you like to be an art department PA? And I said, certainly, what's an art department and what's a PA? <laughs> and I showed up for work and was just eager and willing and, and thought it was the most fun I'd ever had in my life and uh, ended up driving the decorator around. And um, I learned at her feet, basically, watching what she did, watching what she chose, trying to learn on my own, reading books and figuring it out. This was in New York in the, in the late 70s, early 80s, and I just had a ball. I loved it. It was the world's biggest scavenger hunt, and somebody paid me to do it. I thought, okay, I'm hooked. People often uh, um, think that we're interior decorators, which we are to a certain extent. That's a, a small segment of, of what we do. Uh, but I don't think um, uh, Mark Hampton ever had to do a circus or, um, you know, some back lot in, in, in uh, you know, some farm and ranch and uh, racetrack or some horror movie. You never know what we're going to be asked to do to service the script. So we're, we're sort of a combination of, of psychologist and um, logistics expert and um, interior decorator and uh, manager of people. We're human resources manager. Um, we bring so many different talents to the one job classification. It's, not, uh, it's hard to describe to someone who hasn't done it. It's changing now because technology is changing so much. I mean, I can remember running around New York with a beeper in my pocket and um, getting 911 <laughs> beeps and trying to find a, a pay phone. Now, of course, everyone's got a cell phone glued to their ears or an iPad or, um, you know, you've got your computer in your pocket and you're constantly um, in touch with everyone that the uh, communication is very, very, very quick. Um, the largest thing that's impacting us right now is the, is the role of computer graphics in our industry. And it's a constantly evolving question of how do we meld it into the existing framework of the structure of our jobs and the way they have, have been for the time that I've been in the industry. Um, where do you use that technology and who makes the decisions about where it gets used and um, how, how each department is going to um, be woven into that fabric. It's, it's a constantly evolving question right now. Each, each, uh, each job is different. Leslie Pope's story is a really good example of, you know, you, you never know where you're going to end up in life. I mean, you, you guys are all pretty young, uh, and you're deciding what you're going to study now, what direction life's going to go in, but, you know, li life is really good at throwing you curveballs, and just when you think you've, you've figured out what you want, something new will come along. Uh, you'll find that the film industry is filled with a lot of people like that who came to it circu circuitously um, through the back door, through the side door, or, you know, with the eyes wide closed. Um, and I love Leslie Pope's uh, story about that as well, um, which is really good about the text that I assigned and that every uh, person in there is, you know, they're relatively successful in the film industry, uh, film and television industry, and uh, they're getting to tell their stories. Uh, about how, you know, how they do what they do, why they do what they do, and a lot of times, you know, the surprises uh, about how they ended up there in the first place. Um, so, interesting point. All right, let's talk about the hierarchy of the production designer. So on top, uh, the, the department head or the production designer in charge of the entire art department. Uh, underneath them, they have the art director and the set decorator. The set decorator is an interesting job um, because the, the art people, uh, 
the construct you know they they make the plans the, the construction people build it the swing gang gang will bring the furniture and you know decorate it um, but the set decorator is the one who takes the drawings takes the ideas uh, from the passed down to him or her um, and actually goes and finds the stuff or has to have the stuff made if there's a typical chair a, a chair that needs to be made that doesn't exist they can't find it anywhere in any prop house any you know, in their backyard, in any uh, 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 store, furniture store, uh, then they have to have something made. Well, that, that's the set decorator's job is to gather that stuff up. Um, a lot of times they're just going to all the prop houses, all the, the, uh, the places where they get the rental shops and picking out, you know, tagging things that they, that they need. Um, and then they have a, a crew that goes and gets it for them. Uh, an agent set there, you have the buyer, so if uh, they usually just have a, a really big credit card <laughs> and uh, they're going and buying stuff that the set decorator deemed they needed. Uh, a lot of times they're making their own creative decisions about, well, you know, I, I know what color this, these, these, uh, this handkerchief that's going to hang on the wall needs to be, but I don't, you know, exactly. a lot of times they'll buy one of each or they'll buy a whole bunch uh, of one. They'll make that command decision, bring it back to the set decorator, set decorator where they say yes or no. Uh, back to returns it goes and off to buy more. So fun job if you like to shop, buyer. Um, underneath them, there's also the lead. The lead is actually kind of equal with the buyer. Uh, the lead is in charge of actually moving the stuff. Uh, moving the furniture and the and, and not the props, the the furniture and the set decorating, everything that you see on the set, the lamps, uh, the light switches, the chairs, uh, the little dingusy things, you know, the little tchotchkes on the walls. Uh, that is up to the, the the lead and their their workers, which are called the swing gang. Um, a lot of times they'll pull in, uh, you know, the day before a shoot. They'll they'll dump everything onto the set. Uh, the set decorator will you'll say, okay, this goes here, this goes here, this goes here, um, and you know, get your drills out, get your hammers, get everything ready. It's done. Swing gang goes out. They go on to the next set, or maybe they go to the set that they're shooting at yesterday, and they wrap that set. Meaning they take all the stuff down, they put it into the truck, they return it uh, to the prop shops, they return it to uh, the rental houses. Um, and then they're off to buy, you know, the, to gather the stuff for the thing that's going to be shooting the day after that. So uh, Swing Gang, it's, uh, it's an entry level job because you use your back a lot. Um, you need to be able to drive a big truck. Um, but it's a great entry level job if you want to get in on the art department because you, you are hands on with just about everything that is going to be on a set. You are hands on. Uh, so that's the Swing Gang. Um, another interesting job is the on set decorator. Um, this person is part uh, construction person, uh, part designer, um, um, part uh, furniture mover, because uh, on the set, while the, the set is being filmed, um, they'll have one, usually one or two person for the art department called the on-set decorator. And they are in charge of everything that's on the set that isn't a prop, and it isn't a light or a piece of equipment. Meaning that if a chair needs to be moved, they're usually the ones that are going to move it. Or that lamp needs to be moved three inches that way and it's attached to the wall. They need, they're the ones that need to unscrew it from the lamp and, or from the wall and screw it somewhere else. Um, they're in charge of everything on the set. And you've heard that term hot set before. Uh, well, that's usually the on set. They're decorators saying it's a hot set. Don't sit on the chair. Don't move that pillow. Don't touch that uh, picture on the wall. Don't pick up that phone. It's a hot set. Don't touch it. Um, on set decorator is usually, you know, they have, uh, you know, their, their, uh, their Polaroids or their camera phone in one hand or the iPad um, so they can remember where everything goes. And in the other hand, they, you know, they have a, a cordless drill because they, you never know when things need to be moved. Uh, so, yeah, on set decorator, um, pretty, pretty important uh, position. And they are, as opposed to the set decorator, they are on the set, they go with the production. Uh, and we have the construction foreman and construction crew and paint because, uh, you know, construction people don't paint and paint people don't construct. Uh, therefore, there are two separate crews all follow underneath the, uh, the auspices of the production designer. Um, and then we have props. And we talked about props earlier where if it's uh, if an actor touches it or holds it or uses it in some way, uh, it becomes a prop as opposed to set decorating. All right, so the, the big thing uh, in the clip we saw, the Star Wars, the prop guy was in charge of, you know, all the weapons, the lightsabers, uh, necessarily the, the, the armor that, they, that the 
the, like the stormtrooper armor, that's not a prop, but the guns that they held, that was, becomes a prop. And the prop master, you know, if they're, they're fabricators, right? If they have to make something on the fly, they have to go to their truck and come up with it and come back with it. Uh, so they're welders, they're, uh, you know, they're woodworkers, uh, they, they have, you know, 3D printers growing, going in the truck all the time. Uh, they are fabricators uh, to come up with something that the production needs. Uh, and each one of these departments, which is amazing, um, don't need a college degree, uh, just need practical experience or training of some sort or get in on the ground floor and just, uh, you know, work as a runner and start working your way up in any of these one departments.